Hey everyone, this is Fabio the Lion and welcome back. Today we're going to do a video response to Benzo 8686 and it's about the video of most satisfying RPGs that we have completed. I think this was a really interesting video. I saw Benzo's one and other video responses to have an idea of what people would say and what satisfying RPGs uh, they would select as, like I saw Dustin Cries, Bolin Nick, uh, Boston Birth, all great YouTubers, all of them highly recommended, big fan of all of their channels. And I wanted to get into this conversation since it's a very interesting topic. For this reason, I've selected four, four games uh, for RPGs that, men, that mean a lot to me. And uh, as I, of course, like all these videos, these are very personal choices. You might agree or disagree. Uh, as I said, it's my video, it's my choices. Definitely do video responses to Benzo's video so we can spread the word and see uh, satisfying RPGs for other people. Um, let's just go because I'm afraid this might be a bit long because I love talking about this video. I don't want about these games and I don't want to lose myself into tangents. So the first video, the first game, blah, 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 the first game that I have selected. It's the only one I can actually not show you because I don't have it here with me. Um, and it's probably the first real big RPG for me of the PlayStation 1 era. Not really the first one I played, but probably the biggest for me, for many reasons. And that is Legend of Dragoon. Legend of Dragoon is a very special game to me. I've talked about that game quite a lot, especially recently, because for the reason I was... Uh, it came out into my videos, but for good reasons. That it's probably the biggest RPG that I've played up until that moment. There were others, probably even bigger, like Final Fantasy VII. It took me a long time to beat that game, but um, it wasn't a good ride for me with Final Fantasy VII. By the end, I was so bored with Final Fantasy VII that I just wanted to get on with it. I was like, yeah, whatever, who cares, just finish it. I skipped all the dialogues, and I absolutely didn't care about it. With Legend of Dragoon, on the other hand, I wanted to play it as much as possible, to the point that one of the things that hooked me up with this game was the combat system, because by the time um, it was a real breath of fresh air, even though it's still a turn-based game, and I love turn-based RPGs, they are still my favorite, but Legend of Dragoon added a, that touch of action that was by tapping the buttons in order to perform your moves, that made it that made all the difference in the world to me like for example from Final Fantasy 7 or 8 or I don't know other RPGs it made it so interesting but at the same time so addictive because you really wanted if you if that conversation clicked with you you really wanted to perfect it to master all the moves of all the characters that it's a massive investment of time because personally for example as I did I really wanted to perfect it and I managed to do it with Darth, Albert, Rose, and Meru. And I was on my way to do it with Ansho and in the future with Congo. But at that point, I played for more than a hundred hours. So I would say, uh, let's finish the game. Because I was in the last section of the game. It's like the, the best point to, to do experience and grind, both in terms of levels and combat moves. So I stopped there, but I spent I put so much time into that combat system because I loved it. I was never getting tired of hearing the characters like yelling their attacks like Rose saying more and more or or others like I don't remember all the names because I played in the game in Italian so I don't know uh, how good the translation was let's just say the voice acting was amazing in Italian <laughs> um, imagine a game like Grandia or Resident Evil but in Italian I think. oh boy I love the voice acting on the PlayStation 1 so bad that I love it but I was so hooked with this game. Other than the combat system, the other thing that completely hooked me up was the story, the world itself, and the characters. Which is, to me, I combine all of this into the story of the game. Like, Legend of Dragoon presents a story which to me was really interesting and well done. Even though I saw a lot of videos and people talking about this game saying that the story for them is average, kind of nothing special. Because on a way, I can agree with you. It's your your typical good versus evil, save the world, 
And that is true, I am not arguing that, but I think that's just the surface, because Legend of Dragoon has actually um, the potential and the scope of the story, it's much bigger than just the one presented in the game, I think. The history of the world, it's so interesting, the religious, the mythology, all of this was really hooking me up, because I'm really interested in this kind of stuff. But like all the legends of this, the, the first Dragoon campaign, the Emperor Diaz, the war between the humans and the wingmen, I think they're called the wingmen. I mean, all this stuff was so interesting, and um, the religious aspect, like the Tree of Life, I think it's called the Tree of Life again, sorry about this, but I'm really not sure about translation. And of course, the characters, I mean, and in particular, my favorite character of the game, which is one of my favorite characters of all time, that is Rose. I think one of the reasons to play Legend of Dragoon it's the story of Rose. It's a story filled with tragedy and sadness, but also hope for the future in a way. I mean, maybe I'm reading too deep into that, but that story really um, had an impact on me when I played it. Because back then, I was like in the first year of high school or something like that when Legend of Dragoon was released in Europe, or at least when I bought and played the game. And I really like the story, even though by the end uh, I love how it end, how it was, like how we end it. Even though it's very sad, but it's also the right way to do it to me. I don't want to give any spoiler at all. The only little one that I'm going to give you is this one. Um, I saw videos that are really interesting about good love stories into video game, and I like that. And there's nothing wrong with a good love story here and there. And to me, Legend of Dragoon has one of my favorite, and that it's the story between Rose and Zeke. That I love to say that that it's a love so strong <clears throat> that it lasted for more than ten thousand years, and the way it resolved itself is really great. I mean, that's the power of love. <laughs> Just say that. I mean, it was a great story, and also how Rose develops herself as a character, but together with the others, how that group influenced her. I mean, it's really a great story. I think. And cool, interesting enough. Also, I think it's um, just want to mention this thing as well. It's the fact that Legend of Dragoon is the only game that made me skip school on purpose. Um, we all know about that famous Johnny Millennium's video, skipping school to play a video game, and Legend of Dragoon is the only one that made me do this with a good friend of mine. Even though I let me just say that it, we failed miserably. Uh, our <laughs> ingenious plan, but that's another story for another day. But, yes, it was for playing Legend of Dragoon. And also, also, I love this game so much because um, when, I've made it, when I made it to finish it, and as I said, I played for more than 100 hours, I think 115, something like that. When I finished it, I loved the ending, even though maybe it's a bit simple, again, I don't know. I think it was so... so it, that was the right ending for me. The final cutscene with... How after that massive final battle, I, I have to add that the final battle in Legend of Dragoon, it's really a marathon. I mean, I think it lasts at least one hour or two hours. It's a really tough one. But after that, finish the game, you're on top of the world by doing like finishing that insanely long battle. Uh, there is this amazing high action cutscene with something happens, something massive happens. And um, after that, there is this really calm and peaceful uh, credit rolls with Dart and Shana holding hands while watching their town getting rebuilt. So with filled with hope for the future. And the final thing you see um, <clears throat> are two things: the two dragon gems of characters that you know who they are. I mean, it was such the perfect ending to that, and such a satisfaction. I was like, yes, that was the perfect ending for a perfect game to me. I mean, as I said at the beginning, one thing that really disappointed me with Final Fantasy VII was the ending. I'm sure there were all the hidden meanings and uh, something like that. I don't care. I didn't like it. Because after I put so much time to see that 30-second ending, I was like, what the hell is this crap? As I say, I probably uh, missed all the mysticism and the mythological and mythos of Final Fantasy VII. I don't care, if I have to be honest. <laughs> but at least I beat it. So, 
after I watched the ending, I was like, okay, now we have to have Legend of Dragoon 2. We all know how that went. Uh, but I was so excited for the game, and while I was waiting for the game, that uh, I wrote, it's a, kind of embarrassing to say, but I love writing. And um, I wrote an entire fan fiction. I didn't complete it, but I wrote around a hundred word pages of uh, how I wanted Legend of Dragoon 2 to continue, like in terms of story, with new characters, but also old one, uh, because I made a direct sequel. Uh, like, I was thinking also, like, how to improve the combat system while keeping the same. Like, you can do combo with, between, like, two characters or something like that. Uh, like, kind of like Chrono Trigger of your horror party. Uh, I took inspiration from that. And it wasn't that bad, if I can say so myself. But as I said, we all know how it went with the sequel, Legend of Dragoon 2. We're still waiting for that. It's probably never going to happen. But yes, Legend of Dragoon, it's probably one of the biggest satisfaction that I had by finishing a game, because I loved every second of it, of this long game, because I, say, I cannot stress this enough, Legend of Dragoon is a really big game, but I love it from the beginning to the end. And beat it, uh, it was really a great achievement for me as a gamer. The next game that I want to mention, it's very different, the kind of satisfaction. I love again this game from the first second to the end, and that it's Lunar, Silver Star Harmony on PSP, of course. The remake of Lunar Silver Star, or Silver Star Story Complete. Um, the reason why I decided to put this game in here, it's very different from Legend of Dragoon. Because Lunar, on, it's exact same opposite in terms of hugeness. Lunar, it's a very, compared to Legend of Dragoon, it's a very short game. It's a very simple story also, in another way. It's amazing, I love every second of it, and I cannot wait to play Lunar 2. But it's a bit more complicated. But what made me put Lunar on this list is the reason that I was actually able to play the game. Because by the time this game was, re uh, was released on PS1, um, by that time I was into video game magazines. Before that, you're like Super Nintendo days, not so much. But by the PS1 days, I really, really love reading video game magazines. So I knew about this game, but at the same time, I knew that there was not going to be released in Europe, and I was really disappointed because by the time I was a huge RPG fan, I wanted to play as much as many RPGs as I can. Um, but up until the PS2 days, being an RPG player in Europe wasn't easy because most of the games weren't released. Like during the Super Nintendo days, which was even worse. Um, so. Knowing that this game was not going to come out, it was a really disappointment, but I was still hoping, I said, like, maybe, maybe it will be released. Also because at the same time, I played Grandia, on the other hand, and I loved that game so much. It's one of my fairy games of all time. And from that moment, I say, I want to play every single Game Arts game, every single Game Arts RPG, so I really want to play Lunar. So, I've waited until this year before playing it, because, I have to admit, I'm not good with emulators. I don't really like to use them, even though it wouldn't like be very convenient to play certain games. But there's nothing I can do. I'm an old-school player. I love to have the physical game. And for that, I always waited and waited and waited until a friend of mine, who probably uh, thought I was uh, <laughs> miserable, decided to gave me this game for this Christmas. So I played this I played this a couple of months ago, finished it because it's a really short game. I, I think it took me like 25 hours, less than 30 I think, because it's not long. But that's not the thing. I mean, who cares if it's also like 10 hours? Lunar has a fantastic story. It's a short story, but it's such a well-told story. That's the important thing. It's how the story it's told, not how big the story is, how complicated it is. That's the thing. I love even short RPGs. I love small stories, if they're well told. And Lunar is this case. You have these really lovable characters into this great adventure, and you really get into this. I mean, uh, how can you not love Alex, Luna, Jessica, and all the others? It's the same thing with Grandia. It's kind of a simple story. Even though I like it more than Lunar, there's also a bit of nostalgia here. But um, with this game arts RPG, there is a sort of formula into that. This kind of 
uh, as I call it, Grandia effect, because I played Grandia first. That it's like a story that starts simple, but then progressively gets more and more serious until like there's the fate of the world in there in your hands. And it was the same thing to look with Lunar, I think. And I loved the game from the beginning to the end. But my satisfaction was actually playing the game. As weird as it sounds, but you have to understand, I wanted to play this game since the PlayStation 1 days, and I was able to do it just this year. So it was such a huge achievement playing it, and I had no problem finishing it because it's not a difficult game. But it was so good, everything, of course, as you expect from a R game arts RPG. A great story, lovable characters, amazing soundtrack, don't forget about that. I love the soundtrack of this game. And, but again, it was playing it, it was the big deal for me. Next, let's try to move in along to, uh, because I can go on again with all this game, I just have to try to make the video a bit short than I, um, that it might become. The next game, it's again on the PSP, and it's the game that made me, made this video uh, about four instead of three, as I want to do originally. This is my favorite game on the PSP. I can say it without worrying because it's my opinion. And uh, basically, I bought the PSP like two years ago or something in order to play a certain game, and that is Trace in the Sky. After I played and beat that excellent RPG that everybody should play, and I'm still waiting for second chapter, by the way, <laughs> and I said I want to play all Legend of Heroes games that are available to the West. So I did. I bought Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch because I knew that the Gaga Trilogy was available on PSP. I loved that game. And then I played Legend of Heroes, as you call A Tier of Vermilion, which is, as we know, Legend of Heroes 4 A Tier of Vermilion. And after I played and beat this, this became instantly my favorite game on the PSP, even more than Trails in the Sky. Um, it's just a matter of details. They're both amazing. Tracing the Sky, for example, has a better combat system because it's a bit more, it's a bit deeper and more modern in respect to this. But the thing that captured me with Tear of Vermilion are the story, the characters and their development, and the music, which to me are all of these are at the same level of Tracing the Sky. It's not even better, and even better for certain things. But as I said, this is my personal opinion. I don't want to. Trash Stress in the Sky, because this game is fucking amazing. And the satisfaction to me was finishing that game, this game that I didn't expect to love this much. Um, the story of the game, the thing that I really liked it about, um, also thinking about it like this larger story with the whole Gaga trilogy, and this is just a part of it, but... You can see, especially with Song of the Ocean, how these games are connected with each other. Because that is the game that really glued the trilogy together. Because if you play Moonlight Witch and then Tear of Vermilion, you're asking, well, what's the connection? There's nothing in common, apparently. You have to play Song of the Ocean for that. Uh, that's why Song of the Ocean is the only game you cannot play by itself. But Tear of Vermilion has probably, and actually, without a doubt, the best story of the trilogy. And the best characters, because these characters are so, so well developed, from the main protagonist, Avin, um, his best friend, Mile, uh, Rutis, the main female character together with Emil, Avin's sister, Rutis is, has a really good development, for example. Like, as I said, Mile is really important from the story, and at the mid, mid, at the halfway point of the game, something huge happened to him, and I was like, <gasps> oh my god, I mean, it's a complete game changer, that. And uh, the thing is that, with Tear of Vermilion, after I beat it, I thought, with something more here and there, in terms of story and development and everything, they could have done easily, I think, two games out of this. But they didn't. And that's fine, I don't want to um, criticize Falcom. Um, like, another great character, like, there is... Douglas, I think, the swordsman, and Lucius, who was, she was actually my favorite character, one of my favorite characters, even though she's secondary. But I love the friendship and the rivalry between them. Um, this weird friendship and apparent hate between each other because of this matter of being the best disciple of this great swordsman. But at the same time, you can see there is a lot of respect, a lot of friendship. Uh, and other great characters, of course, there is Madran, probably the most interesting and 
tragic character of the game. And th that's one of the, my only, not complain, the only thing that I wanted that Falcon did more with Madrim, because uh, it didn't felt incomplete, but it didn't feel incomplete, but uh, I, as I said, they could have done a bit more, because that could have been so great because you can see all the similarities between Madram and Avin, but Madram is basically how Avin can turn up if everything went wrong, as it went wrong from him. It's a really interesting relationship, the one between Madram and Avin, and they could have done more with that, but it's still fine. These are just details. The soundtrack, it's amazing. It's a really good soundtrack even for JDK standards, because you have to consider this game is pretty old. I think it was released on the PS1 and PC at the time, but uh, I don't remember now, but it's a, it's a game of the early 90s, I think, or mid-90s top. I don't remember now, but it's a kind of an old game. The soundtrack is amazing. Um, like all Legend of Heroes games, you can easily say it like it's very different from the soundtrack of Ease. It's, a, it's very different, but it's so good. And also, by the end, the Tier of Vermilion has a sort of difficulty spike. I mean, it, it, it's not a difficult game, and, and it's not very long. I think I finished it in 30-something hours. Uh, it's a bit shorter in terms of hours than Tress in Sky, since I beat Tress in Sky in 40 hours. But by the end, the game, uh, it's it has like this last section before the final boss, which is a bit confusing and frustrating, because it's sort of like Labyrinth, of uh, kind of similar to is one with the mirror section. Um, I had no problem with that, but the idea is that there are like portals that teleports you from one section or the other of this area. It's a bit annoying because then there are a lot of encounters, but at that point it's also difficult to grind as you are kind of strong and the enemy, the enemies don't give you enough experience to grind a lot, so you. To beat the boss easily, you need maybe those two levels, which are really slow to obtain. But uh, And the final boss is kind of hard. I mean, not impossible, but a bit frustrating. You just have to understand the rhythm to fight him uh, and the right pattern. But finishing that game also, the, the ending of Tio Vermilion, it's amazing. It was such a good ending with this beautiful soundtrack. And I gave such a satisfaction to finish it, because after I beat this, like, I knew that I played something special. And something that I will love for the rest of my life in terms of gamer. And it's not wonder that I've included Tier Vermilion in my list of my favorite games. Just right after I beat it, because as I said, I knew that this was a fantastic game. I would like to replay it sometimes, because it's been a while now that I finished it. But... Um, a great ending that answer all your questions, like for example, between Avin and Mile, what happened to Emil, what happened with the basics of the story, which is the battle between these two gods, and um, how Avin fit in the middle and is instrumental in putting an end to this conflict, what happened between Avin and Rutius, I mean, all this, it's a really good and satisfying ending of an amazing game, so... Definitely one of the most RPGs I beat recently. Um, one of my favorite RPGs all time, I dare say, because this is such a good game. A must for the PSP, by the way. Play the Gagarv games. Maybe they're not as polished or perfected as Trace in the Sky, but they're really good. Especially play them all together so you can have a better sense of the story. And finally, uh, finally, the last game I want to mention has a huge satisfaction in beating it. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and from my favorite RPG series of all time, so you might guess what it is. Since I talk about this series all the time, for good reasons. And the game is obviously Breath of Fire 2. How can I not talk about this game? Since... Um, I love everything about it. As I said, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, from my favorite RPG series of all time. Since when it's about Breath of Fire, I always have this indecision between Breath of Fire 3 and 2. Because maybe at the end of the day, 3 is my favorite, but then I'm always like, well, 2 is also really good. 
And I finished two more recently compared to three. And ending this that game, it's a massive satisfaction to me because of how much I loved it. Breath of Fire 2 has an amazing story, especially for the time. This is a Super Nintendo game. A really dark and interesting story uh, with great characters. The characters in these games are so good, especially some of them are more developed than others. The usual thing, I mean, it's an old game, so not all the characters are well developed as, I don't know, Ryu, Nina, Katz, and others, but the cast is really good. Um, and by the by the ending, by the end of the game, you really you are really attached to these characters. You really want to see how the story is going to end. Because let me just say, I finished this game twice. One with the sad ending, which is one of the saddest ending I ever saw in an RPG, especially recently. I was about to cry. I don't want to tell you what happened, but let's be warned, it's really sad. And then I beat it with the best ending, that was a huge accomplishment to me, especially after that really sad ending that shattered my heart. And also because I've heard that the Super Nintendo version, the original version of Breath of Fire 2, has some difficulty spikes. The um, Game Boy Advance didn't have it, I didn't have any single problem in terms of difficulty to me, when it was perfectly balanced. And... With one exception, the battle with the second to last boss. I think it's called Baruberry or something like that. It's the huge demon, sn demon snake kind of monster that you face before the final boss. And that battle is really tough because you can decide to fight him on your own, just with Ryu, or with your party. If you fight him on your own, he will not use his own strength and power. It's a little weaker, but I couldn't do it. And with your party is stronger, but at least you have your whole party to back you up. But the thing is, it's a very tough battle. Maybe I was a bit under level, I don't know. But let's just say that I died a lot. I was stuck at that battle. Um, for example, by the way, they really should have like developed a bit more the relationship between Baruberry and Ryu. If the name is wrong, I'm sorry, I don't remember it. Let's just call him Baruberry. Uh, because of this thing, it's it's the first real uh, boss that you face at the beginning of the game. And I love the thing, like, I'm your worst nightmare since you were a child. That, I love that. And in a way, I found him more challenging than the final boss. So, by the time you face him, I, when I faced him, I died a lot. And I remember on when I finished the game, I was in Birmingham for a conference at work, but I brought with me the DS with this game because I wanted to try and finish it. But I kept dying on this battle. So by the time I finished this conference, it lasted three days, I was still stuck at this, at this battle. And I was at the station waiting for the train for London. But at that point, out of nowhere, I don't know what happened, I actually beat him. So it was like, oh my god, I did it. I've done it. I can finish the game. I can face the final boss now. So on the train, the only thing I did was progress with the game, grinding up a little, and then face the final boss. Uh, Death of an... How's it called? I, it's a strange name, so I always call him Saint Eve. Spoiler alert. And it's also such a epic... I don't like to use the word epic too much, but just say that is a really epic final battle. Because of the, way, the what happened the role of your friends in that battle, and the satisfaction that you have that when you know you actually destroyed St. Eve, that you actually done it as good as you can, especially because of what happened if you, with the bad ending, when you know that your victory is incomplete, again, spoiler alert, but it's kind of vague, and the way you destroyed it completely, you know you're dying perfectly. And at that point, that ending, it's so it's such a satisfying ending. And by the moment I saw the, the, the end screen with Patty on a tree, looking at all the, the land before her, was like, oh yes, oh yes, I've done it as, as best as I can. And from it's no wonder, as I said, that this is one of my favorite games of all time, because I loved the, this game from the first moment, from... Like the the relationships between the characters, the characters themselves, like Ryu, it's one of the best versions of Ryu. It's in this game, 
uh, Nina, definitely the best version of that character, but also the others, like the relation between Ryu and Patty is really good. All the story, the, the prophecy about the fated child, I love everything about Breath of Fire 2. And it's no wonder, as I said, that it's such a satisfaction to complete it properly. Because the sad ending, it's not the way to beat this game. Even though it's a really good and unexpected, I didn't expect it, I have to be honest, but it's a really good ending. The way to do it, it's the best one, because it's the most satisfactory, of course. But uh, finishing that way, it was a really good feeling. One of the best that I had, probably until I played Theor of a Million, I have to say, because I finished a couple of, maybe a year before that, so. So guys, these were my four choices for games that were huge achievements and satisfaction to me to complete. I um, hope you liked it. Definitely go watch Benzo's video uh, and uh, subscribe to his channel. It's a really good one. And uh, this, he makes really interesting videos. So guys, uh, this is all for now. I hope I was really busy this moment, so I I'm really glad to have done this video finally. So um, see you next time and take care.